Okay. Hi, everybody. Audrey Clover Victor. I'm an attorney and solo practitioner, and I focus on advertising, marketing, and promotions law, intellectual property law, and privacy law as it all works together in this field. Um, this is, you know, a presentation on basic in marketing law, uh, not legal advice. That's my little disclaimer per the Florida bar. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to touch general points and most of you will probably know. So consider this as a quick refresher. Um, so let's talk about so consumer protection against false, deceptive, misleading, fraudulent, and unsubstantiated the claim. Sorry, oh, tongue tied today. Uh, claims and as you very well know, um, the FTC has broad jurisdiction to regulate and enforce actions for advertising nationally, and they get their jurisdiction under the Lanham Act, of course. It's not just the FTC that you have to worry about. You also have to check and see what other rules apply federally because just about all other federal agencies have their own regulations, FDA, SEC, IRS. And of course, on top of that, you need to confirm and check for state laws and make sure that you're not violating state laws. Um, there are jurisdictions and of course, there are case laws that we need to worry about um, as well. And there are situations where are where there are uh, New York City is a great example of local jurisdictions with rules. And I have a case here real quick to give you an idea. It's New York City versus Ballyhoo Inc. They sued Ballyhoo. Actually, they got a judgment against Ballyhoo in October 2019, who ended up paying a hundred thousand dollar fine. The, for ignoring all the letters that they were getting from the city to stop parading on a barge up and down the river with a Times Square billboard size on this barge. And it, and basically it was enforced under zoning restrictions instead of advertising law. So this is a good idea of not just having to be aware of what your federal rules are and your state rules are, but also you need to know what where you can advertise and the restrictions on advertising and like I said, some of these jurisdictions use zoning laws and not necessarily advertising laws. So that's something to, con to consider. Um, so what kind of claims are we talking about? Just about everything and anything. There are rules about everything and anything. So um, the requirement is to have a reasonable basis to support your claims. And the FTC law requires that you should be legally compliant before you launch your marketing campaigns publicly. We don't always do that. So yes, we can go back and fix things, but now you're wasting time and money going back when you could have and should have done it beforehand. Just a little, you know, keep that in mind when you're working with your clients and try to get this done ahead of time to do your legal due diligence to avoid issues for false and misleading advertising and getting law, um, letters or lawsuits, letters from, you know, um, the federal agencies or the state agencies or even local agencies. So. As you know, these are a whole lot of different type of uh, kinds of claims we can make. And it's important that you support your claims. As you know, you need studies, you need tests, you need surveys, everything and anything that can legally and reasonably support your claim is really important. Um, puffery is very important because you need to understand the difference between is it a claim or is it puffery? Puffery is obviously a hyperbole, an exaggerated display that's just not measurable, right? So let's just say I say, I am the best advertising law attorney on this planet. Well, huh, hello, how am I going to support that, right? So we could pretty much go with, okay, that's hyper hyperbole. But what if I say I'm the best advertising law in the East Coast? Well, now that becomes an issue because now I have to support that claim, right? And I have to figure out who does what I do up and on the East Coast, how many lawyers, what do they do, what, how are they ranked, and yada, yada, yada. So you need to think about how you support that claim before you move forward with that claim. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, I have, there's also comparative claims. 
in disparaging your competition, those approved comparisons, and you need to address the specifics of the comparisons. You can't just disparage your competition without having a basis for it. And according to the FTC, it doesn't matter how funny your ad is, if you're disparaging your competition, you really and truly need to have support. Um, I have a lot of case law here, but I'm not going to get into it as examples. If you guys want to reach out to me later, I'll be more than happy to share all that information. Uh, but I'm going to keep going because, you know, I want to get in as much as I can. Of course, as you very well know, there are separate rules for advertising to kids, and that's under Karu. COPA also has um, rules to protect kids under 13. Um, there are some rules in COPA that is up to 16. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so let's move on. And now let's talk about who can challenge your claim. Anyone can challenge your claim. Consumers can file complaints with the FTC, with the state, local agencies. Uh, your competitors can file claims. Anybody who has problems with your intellectual property, like did you infringe on their intellectual property? Did you download their photos or videos? Did you not get those clearances? And like I said at the beginning, this is where the intellectual property of my practice comes in because I work on getting those clearances for you. But I also make sure that before you go and launch publicly, that if there's intellectual property involved, that that property has to be protected before you go public, because then how do you prevent anybody from stealing it, copying it, using it without your um, permission? Um, any state attorney general's office can file a complaint for against you. And again, you get these letters from state attorney general's office or federal agencies. Don't ignore those. Tell your clients not to ignore those. Those are in crucial and seriously important. Oh, and by the way, just know that if your clients are getting these letters, the agency that was part of this campaign is also being looked at by these agencies, okay, to see what port, what role did you play in these potentially defective or allegedly defective or deceitful ads, and whether or not they should come after the agency as well. So that's something to keep up with and make sure that you're comfortable with the work that you're doing and with the claims that your clients want to make sure that you put in there. If you're not comfortable with what the claims are, you need to do your own legal due diligence, okay? Make sure you ask the right questions or ignore the red flags. Get your own lawyers, talk to your own people. Just because your client has their own lawyer saying, yeah, 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 guess what? Doesn't mean that you're protecting yourself, okay? So keep that in mind because I know you, you guys work with clients that sometimes may be pushing the envelope. You don't want to get caught in that, in the middle of all that. You, I'm sure you probably heard that there are certain regulatory bodies that also do a lot of challenges in this field. And let me tell you, dealing with these challenges is less costly than having to deal with lawsuits. So again, let's not avoid dealing with them and, you know, deadlines are crucial. So what needs to be um, reviewed? Everything and anything. Everything and anything that is part of your marketing campaign must be reviewed for all these issues that we're talking about, including your privacy issues. And things that I consider as a puffery is a claim. There are rules for everything. Make sure that you can support that. Oh, a picture can paint a thousand words. There have been lots of cases where it's just pictures, no talking, and they, they still get sued because it becomes a disparaging type of a claim and they can't support those claims. Don't forget about implied versus express claims. Just because your wording says one thing, your photos, your videos, your music, Everything that you use could be completely opposite to what your wording may be. Omissions and disclosures. Make sure if you have disclosures, they're blatantly obvious because you don't want people to say, oops, and don't admit important material facts. Like if you're using 
um, if you're using a famous person, make sure that, you know. Audrey, five minutes left. Ooh, so okay. at, some, at some point you want to open it up Still to questions. Still wrapping so it up. Okay. There have been a few. Okay. Sorry, my phone keeps ringing too at the same time. Funny how that works, right? So big thing here, um, misconceptions is just because you have a CMO, just because you have an aid agency, just because you have in-house agency or whole marketing team, their job is to be creative. My job is to give you, is to keep you legally compliant and hopefully keep you out of legal hot water. Uh, contracts need to be reviewed, your legal disclosures, your disclaimers. And let's talk about websites real quick. I want to hit on this really important. Your websites are considered national advertising. Unless you can, you know, minimize where your website hits and you need to keep in mind who is on the other side of your website looking at it and you need to be complying with advertising law, privacy law, intellectual law, and ADA compliance. Okay, so these are the top tips and you can find them on my website under top tips, advertisinglaw.legal, top tips, I'll leave that up, I'm open for questions. Sorry I had to rush through that. That's quite all right. So Robert uh, asked, uh, can you expand on quote, quote unquote support your claim? Like if you, any of us did a study of 120 people here in the New York City, can we launch this as research study as a research study nationwide? The results. Well, if you well, Robert, I would love to say yes, but I need to figure out what the product is, how good was the study, how detailed, what was it? You know what I mean? Because the wording of the study could be helpful or could be hurtful. So I don't know. I would need to look at it and say so. Now, if you're going to launch nationwide, the question may be, is 120 in New York City enough? So I'm just throwing that out there without looking at it, you know? So if you want to reach out, I'm more than happy to discuss it with you. Okay, Angela had asked, what do you mean by social media marketing on your slide Decept of deceptive cautions? Is there any protection for ideas presented as part of a pitch? What can you do if they don't hire you but take your ideas? <laughs> that's where your contracts come in <laughs> so I've heard horror stories from a lot of people and as an attorney I offer agencies review of your contracts especially your NDAs because what I like to put in the NDAs very specific wording where okay I realize that maybe there's no chemistry between you and the client but they like your work so just because they like your work, it is still your copyright. They don't have the they should never have the right or the opportunity to steal your work and plop it at another agency. So the wording in the NDA becomes crucial as to giving them options and how you want it, what kind of options you want to give that person, that that client. Uh, right. So do they want to pay you for this work and you release the copyright and then you give it to them, you know, and, and how much are you willing to give? And so the wording in the contract becomes very, very important. Although I think uh, what Angela is referring to is if you're pitching somebody, uh, particularly if you lose, if you lose, yeah. that you don't have a contract with them. No, but you have an NDA, right? No. You're pitching, so, you're trying to sell your services, right? So you're, you're giving them some ideas as to how they could, uh, how you would work with them. And usually they're tapping into some of your ideas and may take them elsewhere. Okay, well, my understanding, uh, at least the agencies that I know of use NDAs, right? So because it, you don't have to be extremely like heavy legalese, but you want to make sure that they understand they can't just take your stuff and steal it, which Unfortunately, it happens. So, you know, you work hard on these things, you should be able to protect your work, right? And that's just something that I work with on the agency side. And that's what I'm saying. I, don't, I know you don't want to scare anybody off. I get that. But at some point, you, there's a got to give a give and take. And if the client's going to be difficult, then you got to wonder, yeah, is it worth working with somebody who's not going to respect you in your services right and you're not willing to you know come to some kind of an agreement on that right what if it's a response to an rfp is there legal wording you can put in that um maybe perhaps i mean again i'm going 
I'm flying blindly at this point because I need to look at the RFP. And I look, everything is negotiable. At least that's my view. Everything's fixable, everything's negotiable. So I'm more than happy to work with agencies on the legal language to make sure that they understand. I'm happy to share these ideas with you, but the copyright remains with me unless you retain me. Hello, did I lose you? No, no you just, I just uh, took away the sharing because we've got to move on. Oh, no, that's okay. Unless you retain me, their copyright belongs to me, right? And that's what you want to make it obvious. And you, you know, like in all my slides, did you see how I put uh, Glover Dick the PL or rights reserve with a little C? That's a little hint too, right? It belongs to you. It's your hard work. Why should they steal it? Does that make sense? So if you guys have any legal issues like that, just reach out. I'm happy to answer questions on that. I'm happy to help you word it. So not to scare off anybody, that's never my intent. You know, I love working with the creatives because I like all that creativity. And of course, my last thing is not to stifle what you do, is to work with you and to give you the tools that you need to be, you know, to not be taken advantage of, <laughs> to protect yourselves. Um, so any other questions? Yeah, I think we're going to cut it off there because um, okay. we have 17 people online and we want to give everybody a minute 45, I think is the way we're okay. going to do so, it. So I'm going to put my information on the chat. Please feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to answer questions. Yeah, everybody should do that. Um, you know, add your, uh, your LinkedIn to the chat. Um, and we're going to go in the order in which you appear on my screen. And usually it's the order in which you showed up. So Jason, Mark, and then Kevin. Um, I'll start, we're going to do a minute 45. Um, and I will put my timer up when, uh, when it rings, you'll also hear it. Uh, and I'm going to put you in speaker view. So Jason, you are up. Great. All right. Thanks, Michael. Uh, good to see uh, some familiar faces and some old ones. Uh, David, one of them being from years ago. So good to see you, David. We'll catch up. Anyhow, uh, Jason Kramer with Cultivize. Our business is quite simple. We work with both B2B and direct to consumer businesses that have an established business, a sales team of two to 40 people, and are generally spending more than $30,000 a year on marketing. And where we come in is we help them with their lead nurturing strategies. And really what that means is we make sure that all that money and time they're investing in generating leads doesn't fall through the cracks because they have no system in place to nurture and educate those leads through their buyer's journey. So for us, sales managers, CMOs, marketing managers are great fits, as well as anybody that's working with those types of organizations on the marketing or business consulting side. Thank you. Yeah, you, got, you got a whole uh, minute left almost. I do, yeah. oh wow, yeah. okay, I did that quick. Um, so we deploy, um, we work with different platforms in terms of consulting for CRM and marketing automation and sales tools. Um, the one we bring to the table is a platform called SharpSpring, um, which is, by far one of the simplest platforms in the market and very competitively priced for businesses that are again like in that two to let's say hundred million dollar space that may not want to spend over a hundred thousand dollars a year on software um, our strength is developing the strategy implementing the solution as well as doing all the coaching and training and ongoing support and sort of helping them out uh, the clients on an ongoing basis so we're much more of a consultant then we are a software solution um, and we don't do any web development and lead gen. We sort of just stay in our center lane of nurturing and educating leads for our clients. There you go, that's your timing. Okay, um, so Mark, actually I'm gonna change it up a little bit based on how it shows up in my, I took notes. So we'll do Mark uh, T-Ball, then Jane Wallace, and then Kevin Pilmer, Perlmutter. So Mark, you're up. Hi, I'm Mark Thiebel. I'm with Growth Strategy Advisors. And uh, what we do is, is the beginning of the stage of like market discovery, um, positioning, competitive analysis, uh, feedback collection, all pre-branding stuff. Um, I do a lot of that work for private equity groups, um, for some investment banks, and also for private clients. And the whole focus of what we do is really trying to get clients to a better place. So if they're private clients, they're often looking to do better. 
with the private equity groups, a lot of times they've already made a decision and we're either justifying or not justifying their position. But the whole focus is really on getting them to the point where they make a go, no go decision and we help them develop a go to market strategy. So occasionally I get involved after the fact in CX, UX work and um, customer journey. And that's pretty much it. And uh, somebody had requested that uh, people say where they are based, and Mark oh. is in uh, in South Florida. Yes. Uh, and Mark Mark has also uh, been uh, is helping us connect for one of the uh, the companies we represent to one of his former employ employers, uh, um, Lowe's, the hardware company. Cool. All right, Jane, you are up. Hi there. Um, I am also in South Florida, but on the West Coast, um, in Sarasota on the Gulf. I came here about two years ago from New York. Um, I work under, I'm a marketing communications PR person. I work under Jane Wallace Communications and also Jam Marketing with my husband, where we <clears throat> do graphics and design and logo and everything. Um, I come out of a classic PR background, but of course over the years, um, have done much more integrated marketing. Um, I've worked on the agency side and the corporate side and for the last five years um, as a consultant. So I represent everything from individual authors, doctors, entrepreneurs, to uh, small companies, to larger companies that need any kind of marketing uh, initiative, whether it's earned media, whether it's developing websites, um, I think of myself as kind of as a Jane of all trades. I'm a generalist, so I've worked in just about every industry. Um, do everything from you know writing press releases to explaining to people why they don't need a press release, and that is not the end all and be all <laughs> of of a marketing campaign. Um, and I tend to do a lot of detective work, where I really go in and look at what people have in the way of their marketing, their profile, uh, their digital pre presence, and then help them figure out what they really need, what their priorities need to be uh, based on their budget and their needs. So um, I'm really doing kind of everything in that area. I used to be involved in a lot more live events. That of course is not happening as much these days. Um, so, um, this is my first meeting. I'm happy to be part of the group and look forward to meeting you guys. Yeah, and definitely connect one-on-one uh, -on -one afterwards with at least one person. So Kevin, then Michael, then Kim. Everyone, good to see most of you again. I'm Kevin Perlmutter. I'm founder and chief strategist um, of my own company, Limbic Brand Evolution. I'm based in New Jersey, just outside of New York City. And I've been in business for about uh, a year and a half after lots and lots of time in the marketing, branding, and, and uh, even the music business for a while. Um, my company is all about connecting uh, brands with people at an emotional level. So I consider myself to be a brand and customer relationship strategist. And what I'm helping uh, CMOs and brand leaders and business leaders do is connect with the people they wanna reach at deeper levels. I'm helping them focus on what makes them unique and desirable. I'm helping them connect through understanding what makes people tick and evolve how they communicate their customer experiences, their products and services. I'm helping them put things out there that are going to be more unique and desirable um, to their audiences. I take a behavioral science approach to things. I bring in behavioral science insights and approaches. And I'm all about um, turning emotional insights into a competitive advantage for the people that I work with. Great. Best leads? Best leads? Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm super interested in working with CMOs and brand leaders um, who have something special going on in their business and they're just struggling to get the word out in the right way. They're struggling to connect with people. Um, and, you know, I could really help them figure out what it is uh, that they're doing that they can be presenting in a more emotionally motivating way and helping them understand their audience better so that those connections can be stronger. Uh, let's face it, people aren't walking around looking for uh, brands. They're looking to make their life better. Wonderful, thank you, Kevin. So Michael, then Kim, then Larry Joseph. 
Michael Korn, National Financial Network. I am a financial advisor and I help business owners organize their financial world. Why am I here? This is the second career for me. I've been doing this for 15 years. Previous to that, I was a partner in an ad agency way back when in the first dot-com bubble and built an agency from zero to 70 people. I get it. Most business owners don't want to do planning or are focused on their, on their business. They're the accidental business owner. And they're focused on growing their business, growing their business, and they put all this stuff off. My mission is to help the business owner deal with this stuff. You need to build wealth outside the business. You need to protect the business, protect the family. And importantly for the older guys, we need to have an exit plan. And we go beyond personal planning. We deal with the personal planning, investments, retirement insurance. We deal with all the benefits. And we deal with advanced planning issues such as buy, sell, business succession, business continuity, and exit planning. You need to have a plan how to monetize the business. And that's what we do. Uh, good leads are people who consult to business owners. Um, end user is the business owner who doesn't have a plan. You can check on my website. It addresses those issues. And I hope to uh, meet some more people in, through this group. And, and Michael is an Uber networker involved in lots of different, uh, lots of different networks. So good person to know because he cross-pollinates. Um, okay. We try. <laughs> Kim. Larry, and then Victor. Kim, you are up. Kimberly, are you maybe on mute? Are you still with us, Kimberly? Let me see if she's- I uh, am. Okay. I'm on mute. And now I'm embarrassed because I can't use a computer in front of all these very technical, technically savvy people who are here. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I'm a business development consultant, and I help uh, marketing agencies uh, grow their business um, and get more sales. My ideal client is one who has a million to $3 million in revenue um, and uh, can't afford to have somebody like me on board full time. I also take over their LinkedIn profiles and um, get them meetings with C-level people and um, CMO people at, at large companies that they're going after. I'm a stalker. Um, I have worked in um, media and advertising and then took a, a brief journey and did my dream job of uh, running a flower shop for 10 years. <laughs> so I lived my dream. I didn't wait until the end of my life. I did it in the middle. And now I'm going back to what I really love, which is opening doors um, for heavy hitters. Wonderful. And what are, what are really good leads for you? Good leads for me are um, agencies who just don't, you know, they're overwhelmed with running their business and don't, don't have time to focus on sales. That's home. Yeah, just like Michael does it for uh, does their, uh, financial planning for people who don't have time to manage their, uh, yeah. their money. Okay, wonderful. Um, uh, did I say Larry, Joseph, and Victor, then Rochelle? Larry, you are up. Hi, everybody. Larry Joseph. My company is Takeoff Products. I am the owner. I'm in Princeton, New Jersey. I'm a longtime provider of branded marketing collateral to business. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time, and I do take a cerebral, uh, cerebral approach to it uh, to help them with their overall marketing strategy. But I'm kind of in a show-and-tell business, so I figured I'll do a really quick show-and-tell. I started in the custom loose leaf binder business, uh, which have kind of been on the uh, slide because of internet and iPads. And here's a box that did a lot of boxes and custom boxes and uh, packaging for companies. This one uh, holds uh, certain teas, insulation pieces. Um, what is currently ha hitting now are PPE kits. And here's an example of a PPE kit with a spray uh, and liquid uh, antiseptic foam, uh, and this one is a no-touch tool, and there's a mask here in that kit, so I'm doing a lot of that for businesses. Um, oh, this is, I, I love this. You see a little red light here. This is a brand new item. This is a heated vest that we are now offering to our clients. And of course, it can be branded with your company name. I feel like I'm on QVC now. Uh, but, you know, it kind of is the best way to give you an idea of the over 900,000 products that I can offer and help your clients or you to help promote your business. And that's what I do. Wonderful. Okay. 
And, and I want to play pool with David in his place down there. Sounds good. Okay, Victor, then Rochelle, then Angela. Victor. Thanks, Michael. Hi, I'm Victor Lee, and I'm a neighbor of Larry's because I live in Princeton. I live near Princeton, New Jersey. Uh, although the way things are going, it, I'm sure you know he might as well be in Florida, uh, since I'll probably never see him in person. So anyway, uh, what I do is I help my connections monetize their connections, and the way it works, it's a fairly simple two-step process. So step number one is I have some clients for whom I, I get them new business. And as Michael uh, Bendit so kindly pointed out at the beginning, I, uh, we, right now we work with companies whose employees are working from home or they're otherwise outside of the office and they need a secure and a safe and a fast internet connection. So my client has a, a basically what's a super hotspot app where we give you internet access for your computer through your cell phone off your unlimited data plan. So while Audrey fortunately managed to get through her presentation, our, our hotspot is basic, is generally faster and more stable uh, and cheaper than the hotspot you get from the, uh, from the cell phone company. So that's step one. Step two is that I then work with my connections to find mutual opportunities uh, through their networks. And you know, they make the introduction and then we just, you know, we all split the commission. So I've had great uh, conversations with a number of you folks including Mark and Larry and I think Kristen uh, and you know Michael's been testing our product and Jason has sent a, a bunch of folks our way because you know for good or bad this is a product that's really for the times or for the COVID times for people working from home or outside the office and if they need an online you know secure online internet connection which probably seems pretty mandatory these days so anyway that's the scoop uh, I would love to connect with anybody whom I haven't spoken to already uh, and uh, we'd love to, you know, see if we can't do some business together. Thanks. Victor, what's your minimum amount of people in an office that's needed? One. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. So well, I'll connect okay. I'll connect you with you afterwards, Rochelle, and we can chat some more if you're interested. Yeah, I want to hear about that. That's interesting. Okay, Rochelle, you're up. Right. I'm up now. You see, perfect leaded. <laughs> Yeah, I always say your number one skill in business today is sales or we may not be here next year. And when we sell and present, my big question is, are you storytelling or boring telling? Did you just give me an amazing story that lets me understand your high level thinking and your skills? Or did you just drown me with facts and information that I will not remember? So creating dynamic stories for companies is where I do some of my best work. I have rewritten sales pages. I have rewritten sales presentations. Most clients, when they speak, they speak about themselves, not their clients. And that's a number one no-no. So that's a, that's a lot of what I do in terms. Not, not only do I write the presentations, but I teach the person how to speak into it. What's your tonality? What's your pausing? Uh, that all makes a huge difference in when you are delivering whatever the presentation is, be it a pitch deck, a sales, uh, a sales conversation, whatever it is, you need to be able to tell an effective story. So that's a little bit about me for the moment. And I love being here and I thank you. And uh, Rochelle is actually giving a workshop on October 29th. It went out in my, um, my newsletter. Um, and we're going to do five people are going to give pitches. The rest of the people are going to rate them on, a, on three dimensions. And then um, Rochelle is going to give a, yeah, a critique. And I always, say, and I always <laughs> say your stories, it's for your dynamic business growth and not your schlep along business growth. Exactly. One of those memorable um, uh, <laughs> little anecdotes there. Okay. Um, or bylines. Let's see. Um, that was Rochelle, Angela, then Rachel, then David Drucker. Angela. Hi, Angela Case and Tempo Strategic. One of my favorite stories when I was little was called Mini Moons. And it was about a princess who ate too many tarts and had a stomach ache. And everybody, all the experts that the king had, the wise men, the, everybody was trying to figure out how to make her feel better. And finally, nobody could do it. And the jester went to her and said, so how do I make you feel better? And she told him, and he did it, and she got better. This has stuck with me forever, and here's why. So last year, my client at Yale Summer Session said, I want to refresh our campaign. And I said, great. And I went off, and I thought about it, and I called her back, and I said, um, what do you mean refresh? 
what do you want people to know? And she said, oh, I want them to know all the cool things that they can do here this summer. I was like, oh, great. So I went off and I did a campaign. I create, came back to her with a new tagline, which was hashtag YSS, which stands for Yale Summer Session. YSS, you can. And we showed all the cool things you could do. We took, I got a video team together. We shot eight different students. We did headshots and we did short videos talking about all the cool things that they could do or that they had done the year before with the hashtag so that it was shareable. All the students got to see their fellow friends doing the programs. And it was a, it was a really wonderful program for them and the client was really happy. So I would just say that the next time you're stuck, um, ask your client what they want and listen. I'm Tempo Strategic and uh, I'm listening. That's great. Good story. Okay. I guess you're listening. Thank you, to Rochelle. <laughs> Talk. Okay. Um, so let's see. Oh, what I didn't tell you what I, who, who I want. Michael, can I say who I want? Yeah, Rachel oh, Saunders um, is next, by the way. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm, I'm looking for a private school or a stable small business owner who needs a virtual CMO, somebody who can come in with, if they have at least a hundred thousand dollar marketing budget a year, who can come in and tell them how to spend a small budget effectively. Wonderful. Okay. Rachel, then David, then Robert Weiss. Hi Rachel. everybody. Can you hear me? Okay. Good. Rachel Saunders, I'm with Amplifier. Um, we are a company that amplifies the voices of startups, um, extremely innovative startups in the ad tech space. Um, our team is uh, built with professionals like myself. I'm just over 20, just under 25 years in the digital space. Um, I've done everything from working on the publishing side to owning my own ad agency. Um, and the one thing that we do know is that the ad business is constantly evolving and changing. And so we are always looking to partner with um, not, you know, either a disruptor in the market or just simply a better mousetrap. Um, and we're uniquely, uh, you know, have the unique ability to be able to identify that innovation because of our experience, our deep, rich experience. Um, we are looking to work with uh, startups, like I said, in the ad tech space. Um, uh, you know, we're not looking for the guy in the basement <laughs> of his mom's house necessarily, but definitely um, pre-funding all the way to, to kind of mid-round funding. So um, one of our startups is 18 years old, if that... <laughs> if we can use the word startup. Um, so we really do kind of uh, run the gamut with who we work. Um, and I am putting my information right now in here and hope that I get to connect with some of you. Yes, and uh, Amplifier is a new member uh, with Rachel. Uh, and they actually have a model that is, uh, in some respects, overlaps with ours that we, they represent uh, a couple of uh, uh, companies and take a commission uh, when they sell uh, services uh, or or subscriptions, so but uh, we may have a chance to uh, trade leads with one another as well. Definitely. Okay, um, so David Drucker, Robert Weiss, and Kristen Highland in that order. David. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is David Drucker. My company is High Resolution. We are a printing consultancy and production firm uh, in New York City. Um, I started this business back in 1983, and um, though we do commodity printing, we also specialize in high-end, unique, and um, highly demanding turnarounds. Um, our productions really are go from um, from uh, packaging. Uh, printing, signage, uh, and, those, and display work. Um, I did put up in the chat room my um, LinkedIn uh, company page, and if you want to see some of the work, you can go up on there. Uh, our tagline is creative printing for creative people. So our client base are really PR firms, cre uh, creative marketing directors, uh, design firms from one to 50 people, or uh, seasoned professionals and corporations that just really don't want to bother with the day-to-day -day hassle of doing productions. I do want to show something here since we're in show and tell, but this will give you an idea and it's very limited and it relates to COVID and what we're doing right now. But this is a resume. 
Uh, it's in a silk envelope and it's the same type of fabric that we might use on a, um, on a, a, a banner. And when you open it up, the person's resume is on the inside. It's in the form of a book and it is one off. Um, that book was uh, about $1,500 to produce one. It had to be produced in a very short period of time. Um, so once again, I thank you. Um, I'm David Drucker, High Resolution. Thank you, David. Okay, now Robert and Kristen and then Jonathan. Hey everybody. So uh, does everybody have a pen? Okay, so get ready to use it. Going off of what Angela said, um, we just did this, uh, we're in the middle of kind of a building this series called um, Don't Think, Listen. Right? And this is gonna be the tip of the day. Everybody has a product service, you know, pick something and write down two questions, all right? Write down two questions that you hear every other day or every week from people that you're talking to, all right? Write down two questions. You should be able to answer them. Then what I want you to do later today is take your phone, put it on a selfie stick or a tripod, and if you don't, get a stack of books and put a binder clip on your phone so it's stable. Hit record and answer that question like the phone is your prospect. Take that, put it into blog posts, put it on social media, put it on LinkedIn. Use it in the sales process. This gives people the information that they need directly from you when they go looking and they go searching. And that is in short what we do here at Multivision Digital. We're a digital marketing company. We help people create video content across many, many different types of spectrums, every single business objective, and we're doing a lot of what we call remote video capture, which is a, an app that we have where we coach you and you know, do all the professional services of video. Uh, but for everybody, everybody can get started by answering those two questions directly to camera and then posting that today. Wonderful. By the way, I sell pens if anybody needs them. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a, a LinkedIn tip, actually. One of our posts today was, was about cost-effective ways to do video. So if you want to check it out, it's right there. Okay, uh, Kristen, then Jonathan, and then I will go unless I've missed somebody. Kristen, you're up. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, so I'm Kristen Highland. I'm currently based in New York. Sorry, Rochelle. Um, and I'm a corporate communication strategist by profession. Um, currently consulting um, with uh, high tech, companies, um, in particular working with a SaaS startup right now that's pretty interesting, and another one on the media metrics slide. Um, and then if I'm in past lives, if I do take a position in-house, it's typically through the CMO or executive director of communications, and I'm usually on the front line with strategy and executive communications. And it looks like you have a fisheye lens or something. Oh. Best leads, best leads for you? Um, CMOs or um, founders, if it's a startup, um, and in some cases, members of the board. Wonderful, okay. Um, so Jonathan Sroka, you're up. Jonathan, are you still here? Maybe on mute. You may not I'm be sorry. there. No, let's see, let's see, I'm expanding here. Jonathan may have left. Okay. All right, so uh, I will go, let me, um, let me shrink this back down. Give me a second. Okay, so um, my name is Michael Bendit, as most of you know. Um, my company, in addition to building out this, this uh, trusted referral network is I have a company called Software Development Resources and I am a rep for independent, I'm an independent rep for software development teams. Um, and a lot of what the work that we do is with um, marketing agencies, digital marketing agencies. In fact, I just got off the phone with uh, one of my clients um, who 
uh, has brought a lot of work to us, um, small projects, larger projects, uh, because even though he's got um, one or two people that do programming on his staff, he often is overflowing with more work than he can handle. Um, so we, my teams are doing a, a bunch of the work for him. And another benefit of that is that most of my teams are dual short teams. So we tend to be, be able to work at a lower cost than what he can do internally himself, unless he of course is working uh, with offshore resources. Um, but the dual shore option gives him uh, the ability to work with somebody here in the US. So those dual shore teams usually have a small group here in the US, a small number of people, but most of their resources are offshore. So instead of paying, you know, $125 to $150 per hour for onshore um, domestic companies, he's paying more like $30, $40, $50 an hour for these dual shore teams. Um, best leads for me are either small and mid-sized marketing, digital marketing agencies like uh, many of you, uh, as well as startups. We also do a fair amount of work for startups. Um, and I'm also based in New Jersey. Um, I'm gonna go back to the gallery view so I can see all of you. Um, we have only about six minutes left. Um, I, first of all, if you haven't gotten a chance to put your, um, uh, your LinkedIn in the chat, uh, you should do that. Also, uh, for homework, uh, why don't, why don't you make it a, a, um, a point to meet with at least one person who you haven't met with before uh, on this, in this group? Um, you can certainly also reach out via the Slack channel if you want to meet somebody uh, outside of the people who have shown up here. We have about 130 members um, from all sorts of marketing services um, disciplines. Uh, and that's really the best way to connect. Uh, is to meet one-on-one. -on -one. You know, you've heard a lot of one and a half minute, two minute pitches here, but that just gives you a highlight and hopefully should, you know, ring a bell and says, oh, that's the kind of person I'd like to connect with uh, and do it offline, uh, do it one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the other thing, a uh, couple other things coming up. We have a, on October 1st, which is, I guess, Thursday at 1 p.m. for anybody who is, job searching or who wants to optimize their uh, LinkedIn profile for uh, a job search. Um, we're doing a webinar um, and I, that's been in my emails with uh, David Alton and uh, he's based in, in Oregon, Oregon. And of course I mentioned Rochelle is doing one on October 29th. Um, we're certainly open to doing these maybe once a month or so. Uh, so if you have an interest in addressing this uh, this market, this group, um, happy to uh, consider having you as a uh, uh, as a uh, somebody to lead a webinar. Um, also, always looking for more ideas as to how we can how I can make this network better for you. Uh, and of course, uh, we are definitely looking for more leads. Think about you know who you've worked with in the past um, that might be a good candidate for one of the two companies we're representing. Uh, we are also uh, hopefully we'll be adding a third shortly that has a very compelling marketing resources management uh, tool. Um, they were about a $20 million company. Um, no promises yet that we will be signing up, but that's, that's the idea. Um, any comments, questions? We've got a few more minutes.